Welcome to episode 2 of Gun Guides, where I show you how to get, how to use, and how to master every gun family in Spiral Knights. In this episode, I'll be going into an in-depth look at the Alkmer family of guns. Being both beginner friendly and having a skill ceiling high enough to be used well into the late game, the Alkmer is a strong choice for any level of gunner. Every Alkmer starts off as its own 2 star and every Alchemer recipe is available at the Hall of Heroes from Daxon. When building Alchemers, there are three status-based options to choose from. The Magma Driver is the first Alchemer. The Magma Driver trades damage for the fire status. The second is the Hail Driver. The Hail Driver trades its damage for the freeze status. The third Alchemer is the Storm Driver, trading damage for the shock status. These three Alchemers all deal elemental damage and are the only guns in the family that are able to afflict enemies with status effects. The next two are based only on raw damage. The first of these is the Umber Driver, dealing pure shadow damage. The second is the Nova Driver, dealing the most elemental damage at the cost of dealing any status effects. If you're feeling festive, you have the option of turning your Plasma Driver into a Nog Blaster instead during the Winterfest event. Note that the Umber Driver is the only Alchemer capable of dishing out shadow damage. Alchemers can shoot twice before reloading. These basic attacks will ricochet off of the first enemy or structure they hit. The Alchemer's basic attacks have a very short range compared to other guns. This is compensated by a reset in the projectile's range upon scoring a ricochet. Considering this, they can have the longest projectile duration of any gun. Here, the darker purple line is the Alchemer's range without a single bounce. The added hot pink bar is the extra length the projectile gains after one bounce downwards. The projectile has one initial bounce, and a second bounce as well. Alchemer attacks will always bounce to the left after ricocheting. Let's look at a good way to put this information to use. Since we know that every single reflection heads left, my aim is centered on the right hand side. This greatly increases the chance that after hitting these slags, I'll get another ricochet into more enemies. Reversing the directions, the shots must be placed to the left hand side when facing downwards. The shots will then ricochet to the right, causing the same effect to happen. To showcase how to do this wrong, all of my shots here are landing on the wrong side of the enemies, represented by this red tint. Following the rules of the last clip, my shots should be landing somewhere within this green tint. Because of this, instead of getting any meaningful damage with my ricochets, they're all bouncing uselessly off to the right. Using the charge attack creates one large main projectile, splitting off into four smaller ricocheting shots after either traveling its maximum distance or colliding with an enemy or structure. Following this charge's bottom right projectile, we can see it starts at the gremlin bag, makes its way over to the undead bag, makes another bounce off of the gremlin bag, and ends up at the beast bag. As stated earlier, the Alchemer family's auto attacks will always bounce left after landing, at a slightly random angle. In this scenario, the knight is targeting a zombie while using a magma driver. The knight shoots dead center at the zombie, causing the projectile to have a ricochet radius that looks something like this. To optimize damage, the knight could have, instead, angled the shot like this. A shot placed at a sharp angle on the right side of an enemy will put the bounce radius inside of the enemy causing multiple hits. This technique is the bread and butter of an advanced Alchemer user's single target damage. Instead of the normal one damage number appearing, the second ricochet applies a second hit with the same projectile. Aiming the Alchemer charge to either flank of an enemy causes them to absorb the charge's projectiles, causing massive damage in a burst. With enough aim and good charge time reduction, this can be used to great results. To go into further depth, let's take a different angle and see how this charge is positioned. From this angle, it's visible that my charge attack is aimed at the side of the retrode. These green panels show where charge attacks should be shot, 
and my projectile is well into the left green zone. Because of this, my charge attack wipes the retro out instantly. When I shoot this slag, notice how, because of my direct aiming, my charge attack simply bounces off the target. Flashing a normal attack will cause it to gain very long range, even after ricochets. Here, we get a glimpse of a long range ricochet hitting the punching bag. Note that this infinite range shot can be used to hit ghost blocks from almost any distance or it instantly detonate timed explosives in a chain. Flashing the Elkmer charge will cause four additional small ricocheting shots to fly around with long range and fast speed. When the charge contacts the dummy, the speedy projectiles damage both the gremlin and the beast bags. The flash charge can cause some extreme, if not unnecessary, damage to a single target. Combining this charge with a suction bomb can clear waves decently if timed properly. After I lay my bomb down and bait all the enemies into it, I use invis and then flash charge in between them and the wall to get the maximum amount of ricochets. All things considered, alchemers are one of the most powerful lines of guns in the game. They provide a solid option in any kind of level. They're simple enough for a beginner to use, but have enough late game techniques, whereas even a veteran can strive to master them. The different status afflictions add versatility, and the bouncing is a fun mechanic in its own right. Flash charges also give good use to the gun. The alchemers are solid for use by any party as they are non-obstructive to other knights' damage as well. Being a great, well-balanced gun, the alchemers have a solid foothold in any loadout. This brings us to the end of my alchemer guide. Do you think I missed an important mechanic, would like to see your favorite line of guns covered next, or have a new video idea? Let me know.